Good morning, modern steaders. The chicks don't like it when I say good morning. The video this morning is not on the chicks, but the chicks are doing amazing. The water and the feeder are making it so much easier, convenient, and less time consuming for me. But this morning, we need to transplant some of our celery. Let me show you. Started our celery in our tiniest soil block maker that we have. This is our small soil block maker. We started them with that one because we've never had luck with celery before. So if our celery wasn't going to take, instead of having to throw out a medium sized soil block in soil, I shouldn't say throw it out, but compost it. We would just have to compost a little block this time. So we started there. I probably should have transplanted them like a week ago. I just, I haven't and I kind of forgot about it. So, and every time I water them I go, I need to do it. Just haven't. It's heavier than I thought it was going to be. Maybe there's some soil in there. Nah, not really. I guess I just didn't eat my weeds this morning. Oh man, we still have the little round makers on our soil block maker. Let's go see if we can find the square ones to change them over to. We try to keep everything somewhat organized, so hopefully we can find what we're looking for. Fingers crossed, it should be in here. Aha, whew, he's getting scared. The soil block comes with the round nubs and that's for planting seeds. The square one is for transplanting mediums or small blocks into the medium blocks. But the little nubs just got plastic tabs. Just gotta squeeze them and they pop right out, which is nice and convenient. Perfect. The square ones you need to buy separately. And they make a square hole that fits the small soil blocks into. I'm gonna put it in and I need a Phillips head screwdriver, but I'll put them in and I'll show you. Put the other ones back in the baggie and then we'll stick them in our tote so we don't lose them. kind of a pain to do because you just gotta set them in there. There's not like they don't clip in place. There's nothing that they clip fit into. You just put the little screw in, tighten it up and you wanna square up inside afterwards a little peg. Just a round hole. It'd be nice if there was a clip that you could just clip them in, but there isn't. We're using a pre-mixed compost that's for seed starting. kind of funny it's zero degrees outside Fahrenheit and I'm in my basement getting my seed starch ready for my garden. Yeah. Garden's buried probably in about two feet of snow. 
just gonna keep adding water till I get like a cake like batter consistency. So you want your material to stick together and pack like a ball. And that's how you know it's ready. Figaro likes to be involved in every aspect on the homestead, huh, Figaro? You're a curious cat. What are you doing up there, mister? You're crazy. You keeping an eye on us? You better not jump down on us, mister. Yeah, you. Alright, last one. Now, we're gonna go through and find some good celery. I guess this is kind of like gorilla gardening. I try to let the plants go and see which ones thrive, and then that's what we want to plant outside. See the roots are all coming out of that soil block. And we just Set them in. We have 12 salary plants transplanted over to larger blocks now. What are you doing, mister? You want all the attention, don't you? I'm very happy with our pump sprayers so far. They're working awesome for watering the plants. We haven't given our plants any fertilizer or anything in the water. We're just watering them in the organic soil blocks that we're making and our tomato plants. I'll bring you in close in a minute. The tomato plants are doing awesome. I am so excited with these guys right now. Right now, I, I'm seeming to have better luck with the original style condescent lights for grow lights versus the LEDs, but we'll have to wait and see. I kind of do a gorilla style growing, I guess you'd call it. I take care of the plants, but I don't pamper them. And sometimes I'll let them go without water for 12 hours, let them dry out. And then I'll water them. And I just kind of try to stress them right from the beginning. So that way we have a good, strong, healthy plant. And if they don't make it, well, guess what? They weren't going to make it out in the garden anyways. We don't want to have a plant that we have to pamper and that's going to be delicate. We want a good, strong plant that's ready to go out into the elements and that we're not going to have to always be babysitting when it's out in our garden. But look how good these tomato plants are doing. Pull out. They're nice and stocky and they're fat. Let's see if I can find a nice big, f I mean look how, the diameter of that thing, that's nice. 
these plants are just thriving in the conditions we're giving them. And we're not, like I said, we're not pampering them. Now there's a few reasons I try to garden this way is I don't want to have to always be watching my plants and worrying about, oh, they're going to make it through. But the bigger driver of it is, is if there's ever a drought, if we ever have a bad summer, if God forbid anything ever happens and we can't rely on electricity or whatever, I want to learn how to grow my vegetables and my animals and my food so they can thrive in conditions that aren't ideal. So I don't want to be re dependent or reliable on inputs like chemicals and always having to work, getting water to them. I want to get them set up right from the beginning so they can thrive the best way with the littlest inputs and have our garden designed so that we're not always having to water and do this and do that. And for me, I find the best step and the first place to start is inside when we're raising our plants. As you can see there, they're doing awesome. So it works out. This is what we did last year on our tomato plants and everything we started inside. And our tomato plants just did amazing. So we're just gonna keep doing what's been working for us and just keep experimenting and trying more and remembering what worked for us last year, what didn't, and grow on top of that. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thanks for coming along on our crazy journey with us. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.